Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and for watching my videos and supporting me. Thank you very much. My first item today is a article on the free press titled this cowboy wants to teach Princeton kids about greatness this was an interesting article so I thought I would share some of it with you uh, this is a fellow named Shallow Brooks and he is teaching at Princeton Brooks said his course is a deep dive into the autobiographies and speeches from five famous historical figures. The ancient Greek thinker Xenophon, a student of Socrates who wrote a book about the life of great ambition. Italian Renaissance philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli, author of The Prince, whose last name is now synonymous with selfish opportunism. President Theodore Roosevelt, the macho man who was taunted as a child for wearing glasses and hit people in the face because of it. The country's first female Supreme Court Justice, Sandra Day O'Connor, who grew up on a 250 square mile ranch in Arizona and reminds Brooks of his own upbringing. I see myself oddly in her. And finally, Frederick Douglass, the former slave who proves that greatness is not just about how high you get, but how low you start. Brooks said he chose these five characters because each of their stories shows a grit, a roughness, a rebelliousness, a refusal to conform, an emphasis on individuality that I want these students to see. And there's one other quote in here that I thought was really, really significant, and so I highlighted it. This is what Brooks says. If we lose sight of the fact that there's greatness in the world, there's no one for us to imitate, he added. If the students don't see the heights and are told there are no heights, then all that's possible is mediocrity. I thought that was a very interesting approach to pedagogy. And I thought, I'm absolutely stunned that he's teaching in Princeton uh, because, as we all know, these uh, most academic institutions in the United States are about as far to the left as you can get. This next article I found interesting because it reports about a cyber attack that took out more than 600,000 routers in a hack that it says recently discovered, but it wasn't recently discovered. It was discovered last year. It was recently revealed. So that's a poorly written headline. Um, basically what happened was, and they and the don't even know who did this, some hackers figured out how to do a firmware update on routers that would make them unusable. And so essentially what they did was they took out uh, an entire section of a uh, internet service provider's service. And the article talks about what happened and what the impact of it was. And I thought you might find it interesting to read. As always, I put all these links in the description so that you can read them for yourself if you want to. And this next article is one that's kind of uh, uh, personal to me. It's called The Rush to Judgment on Thomas Jefferson is an Offense to History. I'm not going to read any of this, but I am going to talk about it a little bit. Um, some of you may know that uh, in the recent past, there was a series of DNA tests done that showed that a Jefferson male fathered one of Sally Hemings' children. Now, the they used Y DNA, which is the male DNA, and that doesn't change very much at all over hundreds and hundreds of years. And so Y DNA can tell you who the father is, uh, 
or who the paternal line is. You have to have more information to know exactly who the father is. But you can tell what paternal line someone came from by looking at their Y DNA. Um, what this test found was that a, a descendant of Field Jefferson, who was Thomas Jefferson's uncle, uh, shared Y DNA, Hopla groups, it's called, with uh, Eston Hemings, who is uh, Eston Hemings' descendants, which is one of the uh, children of Sally Hemings. So, what we know from that is that Thomas Jefferson's grandfather, who fathered his uncle and his father, was the source of the Y DNA, which means that it could have been Thomas Jefferson, but it also could have been several other people. So, essentially, what we know from the Y DNA is that A. Jefferson fathered. Eston Hemings. We don't know which Jefferson it was, but we know it was A. Jefferson. So then, leaping from that, researchers who were eager to denigrate Thomas Jefferson stated unequivocally that he fathered all of Sally Hemings' children. Now, the Y DNA doesn't tell us that. The very best it can tell us is that Thomas Jefferson fathered Eston Hemings, but it says nothing about the other children of Sally Hemings at all. And in fact, a test was done on one uh, person who was supposed to be Sally Hemings' first child, and, <clears throat> and that test proved that A. Jefferson did not father him. So. If you just take the evidence on face value, the most that you could possibly say is that Thomas, Thomas Jefferson possibly fathered one of Sally Hemings' children. But you certainly cannot say he fathered them all, which is what now they are claiming. And this irritates me because it's, it's not honest science. It's not looking at the evidence and following the evidence and saying, okay, what is the truth here? And the only truth that we know with any certainty is that A. Jefferson fathered one child of Sally Hemings. We don't know who fathered the other children of Sally Hemings. And we don't know if Thomas Jefferson fathered Eston Hemings. Now, when you look at the rest of the evidence, what you have is two competing stories. You have a son of Sally Hemings named Madison Hemings, who later in life complained, or, or, or uh, not complained, but he, uh, he claimed that his mother uh, was Thomas Jefferson's concubine, that she had all her children with him, and that he worked out a deal with her that all of her children would be freed uh, because she was his concubine. Now, Madison Hemings had no way of knowing this for a fact because he didn't witness any of it since he was the last child born to Sally Hemings. There is no way that he could have known about any of the stuff that happened before that. Now, it's possible his mother told him this story, but we don't know that because his mother never publicly stated anything about any relationship she might have had with Thomas or any other Jefferson. So we have that story, which they're leaning on very heavily to make the claim that Jefferson fathered all the children. And then we have another story, which was a, um, I don't remember what they called him, foreman or manager, the person who ran uh, Jefferson's Monticello estate when he was asked if Jefferson was the father of Sally's children, he said, no, I know who was because I saw him coming out of her uh, cottage many times. But he never did say who that was. So you have eyewitness testimony saying Jefferson is not the father. And then you have 
non-eyewitness testimony saying he's the father of all the children and what the researchers and historians have said it's a settled deal Jefferson fathered them all and and that just irritates me because I I'm a seeker of truth I want to know as much as I can what the actual truth is and that is not what is being told about Thomas Jefferson you can read that article for yourself. Um, there's also some other articles on the web. You can look up Sally Hemings and Thomas Jefferson and find them. And you can read both sides of the argument and decide for yourself what you think is the truth. Uh, this next article is one that when I saw the headline, I almost fell over. I couldn't believe it. It says Biden administration presses allies not to confront Iran on nuclear program. What in the world are they thinking? This is insane. Now, I can't read this whole article because it's on the Wall Street Journal and they require uh, a subscription, and I'm not going to give them a subscription. But I'll read you the first paragraph, which is visible. The Biden administration is pressing European allies to back off plans to rebuke Iran for advance advances in its nuclear program, even as it expands its stockpile of near weapons grade fissile material to a record level, according to diplomats involved in discussions. First of all, what in the world, what in the absolute world is, I mean, what is Biden thinking? What is his administration thinking? Have they lost their minds? And then secondly, I hope Europe is smart enough to ignore Biden and do what's right and censure Iran. <sighs> Man, I'm telling you. This world we live in right now is absolutely insane. It is crazy. And finally, the last article I have is an interview. John Stossel says the president should be able to fire the bureaucracy. I highlighted a couple things in here. What fundamental shift in your thinking about governance and politics led you to switch focus from big business problems to government problems? Stossel responds, I watched government F things up. Coming out of college, I naively believed that government would fix problems. Then as a young reporter, I saw government not always make things worse, but over time make things worse. It created bureaucratic obstacles with unintended side effects. As I read more about capitalism and libertarianism, I realized the competition does it much better than government. But nobody in the media was getting it. Media love government. It's intuitive to a lazy thinker that if you pass a law meant to do X, it will do X. Instead, it does a little X, but also does some Y and Z, which create new problems. Yeah, the, that's called the law of unintended consequences. And then there's another question. Yeah, Millet's Argentina is an example. Republicans think it's, thinks it's great, and Democrats think it's an authoritarian level, authoritarian level of executive power. Should we empower the executive in such cases? Stossel responds, it should be the president's right to fire people. But we have civil service rules which make it impossible. Millions of people work for the government, many useless and harmful. I don't believe Trump would actually fire them, but it would be good if he did. If the public doesn't like it, they can elect somebody else. Yes, absolutely. That's what we do is we elect leaders who will do what we want. And finally, there's this. The Daily Wire's rise is a good example in tandem with Disney's declining favor. What would the top priorities of the incoming president be? Stossel responds, put Medicare and Social Security on a sustainable course, which means rescinding some promises, reducing annual increases, and indexing retirement age to lifespans. Then shrink the Labor Department, the Agriculture Department, and the Commerce Department. These operations autopilot. You don't need a government departments telling people what to do. It's destructive dead weight. I would say, let's not shrink them. Let's obliterate them. Let's get rid of them. And while we're at it, let's get rid of the Department of Education. That is an absolutely useless appendage of the government that does nothing but destroy education at the local level 
which is where education should be controlled. As I've said many times on in, in my daily news clips, the most important thing that you can do is vote on your local levels because the local level is where you have the most influence, you have the most control. The place you have the least control is that part of government that's the farthest away from you, that's separated from you. And in America, that would be the federal government. In other nations, it would be your federal government. But the government you should care about the most is your local government. If you make changes there, they will end up filtering up to the higher levels. So that's the news for today. As I always say, I'll put the links in the description for you so you can read these yourself if you want. And I don't want to forget, this is my shirt for today. All right, fulfilled my promise. And I pray for you that you will have an abundant life, that you'll live a long time, that you'll be healthy, that God will keep you safe from harm, and that you will be born again if you're not already. I pray for the same thing for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.